a monument to ambition, a needle of steel, glass, and pride piercing the clouds. The Burj Khalifa isn't just the tallest building on Earth. It's a bet against gravity, against nature, against time. Rising 2,722 feet from desert sand, it doesn't just kiss the sky, it dares it to strike back. But when you build a vertical city in a region flirting with tectonic risk, you don't wait for the Earth to move. You prepare for war with it. Dubai isn't known for earthquakes like San Francisco or Tokyo. But that's exactly why engineers took no chances. They didn't ask if the ground would shake. They planned for when. Because if you're planting the world's tallest structure into the Earth, one thing's clear. It can't afford to flinch. Step 1. Foundations. Massive ones. 192 piles, each driven more than 150 feet deep into bedrock. Reinforced with super dense, high-performance concrete. This isn't sidewalk cement. It's engineered to harden like steel and hold like a bunker. A 12-foot thick mat anchors the tower, poured with over 58,000 cubic yards of reinforced concrete. That's enough to fill 100 Olympic pools. Beneath the glimmering tower, a tank built to wrestle earthquakes. But strength alone isn't enough. You need flexibility. Traditional buildings resist movement. The Burj Khalifa, it flows. With a Y-shaped, triple-winged floor plan that breaks wind vortices and spreads structural load like a tripod, it's built to dance with pressure, not fight it. Every 30 floors, mechanical levels act like shock absorbers. They're not just for equipment. They're built to swallow energy and redistribute stress. Layers of steel designed to twist slightly under pressure, prevent snap failure, and the tapering shape? Genius. It keeps the tower from hitting resonance, the deadly rhythm that can shake structures to death. Even the windows are fighters, pressure rated, double glazed, and set in frames that move slightly under duress. They expand, flex, and breathe under heat, wind, or seismic motion. Armor you can't see, but always working. And the Burj moves, intentionally. During strong winds or minor quakes, it sways up to five feet at the tip. That's not instability, that's engineering salvation. Movement saves structures. Stationary rigidity breaks them. Now, how do you know when trouble is coming? Sensors, hidden throughout the tower. Seismic detectors, vibration monitors, stress indicators, all feeding into an AI-driven command system that watches 24-7. If a quake starts hundreds of miles away, the Burj knows before humans do. Instantly, elevators pause. Smart locks activate. Structural systems brace. Staff receive alerts. Every piece of the skyscraper shifts from passive to defense mode in seconds. Even elevators, the fastest on Earth, are built with shock-absorbing rails, emergency stop systems, and vertical lockdowns. They don't plummet, they hold. Drills happen monthly. Thousands can evacuate through pressurized stairwells designed to resist fire, smoke, and panic. Tanks hold emergency water. Power stays online via backup grids. Every detail is accounted for. This is more than a skyscraper. It's a vertical fortress, a seismic-proof statement to the planet. We know the risks. We designed past them. The Burj Khalifa wasn't just built to break records. It was built to survive them. This is where architecture meets battlefield readiness, where beauty hides behind armor, where glass isn't fragile. It's tactical. Tallest? Yes. But also the toughest, smartest, and most prepared structure of its kind on Earth. At first glance, it's just glass and shine. But under the surface, a masterpiece of hidden tech, engineering sorcery disguised as luxury. The Burj Khalifa isn't just tall, it's smart. And that's the secret to its survival. This tower breathes, thinks, and reacts in real time. Start with the glass. Over 24,000 reflective panels. Everyone custom designed to reduce heat, deflect UV radiation, and withstand hurricane-level winds. This isn't just aesthetic. This is temperature defense. The panels are coated with a special silver coating that reflects 80% of sunlight, reducing internal heat by up to 40%. In a city where the desert sun tries to melt concrete, that's survival, but that's just the skin. The real intelligence is inside. A vertical city needs a vertical brain. And the Burgess Building Management System, BMS, is exactly that. A digital command center monitoring over 100,000 data points. From water pressure to elevator speed to wind shear. Every floor, every room, every second. Measured, analyzed, adjusted. The elevators? Not just fast, they're smart. 61 in total with double-decker cars and destination dispatching. So you don't wait, you flow. When a quake is detected or the wind exceeds 80 kilometers per hour, they shut down automatically, descend to safety levels, and lock in place. No panic, no chaos, just precision. The air systems? Also tactical. The Burj pulls air from the atmosphere, chilling it in custom cooling plants the size of football fields, then filters it through pressure-controlled shafts that keep humidity out and cool air in. Even as the temperature outside hits 50 degrees Celsius inside remains a stable 22 degrees Celsius. Luxury? Sure. But also a feat of climate warfare. The plumbing? Legendary. 15 million gallons of water move through its pipes every year, managed by gravity-assisted systems, pressure-controlled valves, and energy-efficient pumps that operate like arteries in a living giant. Water doesn't just flow. It's calculated, optimized, and recycled through one of the most advanced gray water systems ever installed. And then, there's the lightning protection. 
At 2,722 feet high, the Burj is a magnet for nature's fury. So what protects it? A massive copper grounding system that runs from the spire to the earth like a lightning rod embedded in muscle. When a strike hits, it channels electricity harmlessly into the ground at 220,000 amps. That's enough to fry a plane engine. The Burj? Don't blink. Even the spire is tech. It's not just a pointy hat. It houses communication systems, surveillance modules, and weather tracking gear. And it's built to bend up to 1.5 meters in high wind. No cracking, no cracking creaking, just adaptation. Power outages doesn't happen. Backup grids kick in within three seconds. Powered by a network of diesel generators, solar panels, and dual feed systems from separate substations. It's like having two hearts. If one fails, the other takes over. And security? Insane. Military-grade encryption on all building systems. Facial recognition. RFID access points. Thermal body scanners. Even janitors need clearance. Every visitor is tracked. Every floor logged. Every emergency rehearsed. What about earthquakes? Seismic sensors are embedded every 10 floors, feeding data to engineers in real time. If anything unusual occurs, alerts go out within milliseconds. Automatic responses trigger structural shifts, HVAC adjustments, and emergency route activation, all controlled by AI that simulates thousands of threat scenarios every hour. This isn't just tech, it's tactical design disguised as elegance. The Burj isn't a building, it's a living machine, a hybrid of luxury and war readiness, a skyscraper that doesn't just touch the clouds, it challenges the future. Burj Khalifa isn't just the tallest building. Building. It's the loudest message ever built in silence. A statement in steel and glass, a vertical exclamation mark rising from the desert that screams, look at what's possible. But this isn't where the story ends. This is where it multiplies. Because the Burj didn't just redefine what a building could be, it reshaped what cities dare to dream. After 2010, the game changed. Every skyline around the world has an inferiority complex. Countries scrambled to announce their own tallest towers. Saudi Arabia broke ground on the Jeddah Tower. India proposed the Mumbai World one. Malaysia dreamed up the Merdeka 118. But while others were still sketching, the Burj was already inspiring. Dubai wasn't just chasing records, it was building identity. In a region once known only for oil, this was the moment they flipped the narrative. From petroleum to progress, from camels to concrete wonders. And here's the truth most people miss. The Burj Khalifa was never built to be just a building. It was built to be a symbol, a tool, a weapon of soft power. Tourists flood in. Businesses rush to rent space. Global brands begin to advertise on it. You're not in a tower, you're in the most famous vertical address on the planet. It changed Dubai's economy. Real estate boomed, infrastructure followed, hotels, highways, metro lines, all designed around the gravity pull of this skyscraper. Property prices in downtown Dubai? Sky high. The tower didn't just rise, it pulled the whole city up with it, but it also lit a fire, because now, everyone wants the next Burj. So what comes next? Let's talk numbers. The Jeddah Tower in Saudi Arabia aims to hit 3,280 feet. That's over 500 feet taller than the Burj, a literal kilometer into the sky. But construction stalled. Corruption, cost overruns, pandemic delays. The challenges of outdoing the Burj are real. Why? Because the Burj didn't just raise the bar. It wrapped it in titanium, buried it in the sand, and dared anyone to find it. Meanwhile, engineers are thinking beyond just height. They're thinking about flexibility. Buildings that move with earthquakes, towers with AI-controlled shapes, structures that absorb sunlight and power themselves. The future isn't just about being tall, it's about being alive. Enter floating skyscrapers, vertical cities anchored in the sea, storm proof, solar powered, self sustaining. The line between architecture and science fiction is gone, and then there's Mars. Yes, seriously. Some companies are already drafting vertical colonies for other planets, modular towers that can be airlifted and assembled in space. You think the Burj Khalifa is crazy? Try building it in zero gravity. But no matter what comes, the shadow of the Burj looms. It redefined the limits, it made impossibility look easy. It reminded the world that sometimes concrete and ambition can rewrite what's considered realistic. And its legacy goes deeper than glass and steel. The Burj taught a generation of engineers, architects, and leaders that scale is a mindset. That if the math works, the rest is just execution. That the future doesn't ask for permission. It's built by those crazy enough to attempt it. Even today, the Burj stands not just as a feat of engineering, but as a living challenge. A challenge to dream bigger. Build bolder. Think vertically. Because someday, someone will be its height. But the Burj will always be the first to look down on the world and then ask, who's next? Think the Burj Khalifa is just a building? It's a message that the sky is just the beginning. Hit like, comment, rise beyond limits, and subscribe for more untold stories of engineering, power, and ambition.